The FCC may have dropped the largest hint yet about the Starship's second launch date. While the FAA remains quiet, the FCC has responded to SpaceX's requests in a timely manner. Let's take a closer look at this recent filling and what SpaceX is up to at Starbase while they wait for launch approval. It has been several weeks since the Starship completed all of its pre-flight tests, however. The craft has remained grounded due to the strict regulations imposed by government agencies. September has arrived and October is looming on the horizon, but it's hard to say for certain when it'll finally get a chance to launch. Predicting a launch date for the Starship has become more challenging than ever, given the swirling rumours and uncertainty surrounding it. Recently, SpaceX unveiled a new launch license from the FCC, shedding some light on the potential time frame for the Starship's upcoming rocket activities. However, even with this new information, the exact launch date remains elusive, leaving eager onlookers in a state of anticipation. SpaceX is eagerly awaiting approval from the Fish and Wildlife Services for its launch pad, where the next Starship orbital flight is set to take place. In preparation for this significant test, SpaceX has diligently submitted an application to the FCC, seeking permission for communication with the Starship during the upcoming trial. According to the filing, the Starship test campaign is scheduled to kick off in January. It's essential to understand that such filings are a regular part of SpaceX's operations, as they continue to develop the world's largest rocket at their facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The recent filing, successfully approved by the FCC, pertains to a six-month period starting from January 27, 2024. In comparison to an earlier flight conducted earlier this year, which was also associated with the second Starship test flight, the recent filing has a more restricted scope. The previous filing, which came to light in May, just under a month after the Starship orbital test flight, covered a wide range of aspects. These included the first stage booster, the launch pad, the entire Starship vehicle, and the second stage. However, the most recent filing has a narrower focus. It is centered solely on obtaining FCC authorization for communication with the Starship booster and the launch site. Depending on whether SpaceX has submitted additional applications to the FCC, two possibilities arise. It could imply that SpaceX is either planning Starship tests that are not orbital, or they may have submitted separate requests to the FCC to seek clearance for the entire Starship vehicle and its orbital flight. It's worth noting that January 2024 is around three months away from the present moment, marking the evaluation period by the Environmental Agency for the Starship program. Any delays extending this time frame could pose significant challenges, leading to an official nine-month postponement from the initial launch date. Considering this, it might be prudent for government officials to explore the possibility of constructing a larger rocket garden for Starship, accommodating potential delays and ensuring a smoother launch process. However, it's essential to be realistic and not overly reliant on the FCC's provided time frame. For SpaceX, these regulatory processes often involve routine paperwork, and the given timeframes merely serve as extensions for Starship's activities in the subsequent year. Moreover, even with the FCC permit in place, it explicitly states that the Launch Licensing Authority falls under the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Therefore, regardless of the circumstances, the definitive timing for the Starship launch should rely on official notifications from the FAA. While eagerly awaiting the latest updates on the launch permit, SpaceX is maintaining a brisk pace of activity concerning their next planned orbital test flight of the Starship. There is ample evidence indicating that SpaceX is deeply engrossed in a flurry of tests and manufacturing new rockets at their facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. Rumors circulating suggest that the company is actively upgrading the abort system for the booster, a critical component set to be utilized in the upcoming second test flight. Furthermore, recent tests conducted in Boca Chica indicate that SpaceX deliberately caused a tank to burst, likely as a means to test its structural limits. Such deliberate tests are a common practice in rocket development, providing engineers with essential data regarding the structural integrity of the equipment and potential failure points. SpaceX takes a radically different approach to rocket development compared to traditional aerospace organizations like NASA. While the latter entities typically spend years meticulously manufacturing a vehicle, SpaceX operates on a rapid cycle. They swiftly construct equipment, rigorously test it for potential failures, and promptly implement necessary upgrades. This approach allows them to actively produce Starship test articles, continuously incorporating recent improvements even as they await the second orbital test flight. Recent upgrades to the Starship rocket are extensive. They include the implementation of a new engine gimbal system, enhancements to the engine valves and ceiling rings, modifications to the abort termination system, and an improved fire suppression system designed to either eliminate or minimize fires within the rocket's engine compartment. These upgrades were prompted by the multiple failures experienced during the April test. In that test, the world's largest rocket lost several engines during flight and somersaulted in the air as it awaited activation of the flight termination system. SpaceX identified the systems responsible for these failures and swiftly made necessary adjustments. 
Notably, SpaceX has also increased the speed of production and testing for the new Starship prototypes. Following a successful cryogenic proof testing at the Massey site, Booster 10 moved on to the next phase of its journey, returning to the production site within SpaceX's bustling Starbase facility. This move marked a crucial turning point in booster development, signifying the shift from testing to the assembly and refinement stage. Booster 10 underwent significant transformations, sparking speculation about the nature of the work being carried out. One notable development was the booster's placement in Mega Bay, a strategic location within the facility. This relocation hinted at a flurry of imminent activity, leaving enthusiasts and experts eagerly awaiting the next steps. Although the specifics of the work remained concealed due to limited visibility within Mega Bay, several educated guesses emerged. Foremost among these were discussions regarding the potential installation of engines on Booster 10. The booster's placement on a stand that aligns with engine installation points fueled these speculations, raising the possibility of the booster taking its final form as it readies itself for static test firing. The preparations at Ship 29 have been a central focus of ongoing progress. This vessel underwent rigorous cryogenic proof testing, a crucial step in evaluating its resilience against the harsh conditions of space. Concurrently, Ship 28 has seen notable activity as well. Observers have spotted intriguing modifications to its nose cone section, where a set of covers was installed over the header tank vents. SpaceX has notably improved the process of stacking rocket parts, accomplishing this task faster than ever before. Booster 13 has led the way in these advancements, displaying remarkable speed in its stacking process. With only two pieces left to integrate, it's on the verge of completing its liquid oxygen tank, showcasing the efficiency and precision of SpaceX's assembly process. This accelerated stacking process reflects a refined and streamlined approach to production at Starbase. Impressive rates of rocket assembly are being achieved simultaneously within the high bay. Additionally, the saga of Ship 31 is nearing its climax. Positioned on the brink of completion, Ship 31 awaits only the final addition of its engine section before standing as a fully realized spacecraft. This achievement not only highlights the proficiency of SpaceX's high bay operations, but also signifies the promise of an extensive fleet of spacecraft ready for upcoming missions. Finally, at the launch site, updates on both Ship 25 and Booster 9 have piqued interest and sparked speculation among enthusiasts. Ship 26 has been repeatedly hooked up to a crane, but has yet to undergo cryogenic loading or engine tests, leaving observers curious about the reasons for the delay. Meanwhile, Booster 9 has remained a focal point of attention. Despite being declared ready by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, extensive work continues on the booster. An intriguing development has been the reinstallation of hot staging on Booster 9 after SpaceX engineers removed it from the booster recently. The exact reason for this decision remains uncertain, leading many to believe it might be related to undisclosed issues or necessary modifications on the booster. Observations of SpaceX personnel working with welding equipment on the top of the forward dome of Booster 9 after the ring was removed have led to speculation about potential internal modifications or a permanent attachment. The absence of these rings both at the build and launch sites has triggered suspicions of replacements or static fire incidents, raising questions about SpaceX's ongoing efforts with the Starship prototypes. As SpaceX continues to work on various prototypes and expand its operations, the removal of the hot staging ring remains a fascinating development. It underscores the undeniable dedication and effort at SpaceX's Starbase. Even as they near the completion of a Starship, SpaceX doesn't become complacent. Instead, they persistently test and experiment ensuring they have a firm grip on the anticipated success, a milestone that undoubtedly holds immense significance within the space community. Do you think we will see regular Starship flight tests going forward? Or will regulations continue to be a hurdle for SpaceX? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.